Hey everybody, welcome back to my Pink Room of Doom. As always, I hope you're doing well today. So, I know I just did that video on the uh, guitar collection update, and, well, that's changing. Those, those videos don't stay relevant for very long, as my fellow guitar players can vouch for me on that. Um, I'm adding to it. So, uh, this is a new guitar day. It's a very special new guitar day, because I seem to have this ability maybe because I'm scouring used markets just constantly for, for interesting stuff. But I seem to have this ability to find really, really hard to find guitars, and this one is no exception. So the guitar in this video today is gonna be this Epiphone Les Paul Custom in this absolutely stunning wine red finish. I think a lot of Les Paul fans, a lot of Gibson fans, a lot of Epiphone fans, might be looking at this and immediately be thinking, that looks like the Jerry Cantrell Wino, which, yes it does, with a few cosmetic exceptions, but otherwise, that's part of the reason I pulled the trigger on this thing so quickly. It came up for sale on Musician's Friend, and I didn't even know that they came in this finish. As far as I know, they were, you know, the black, the white, silver burst, uh, Koa. If you go on the Epiphone Wiki, you can see that they do in fact make them in wine red, or they did at one point. According to my research, these were limited run models for specific dealers. Um, I think Sweetwater had them at one point. I don't know any of the other dealers that had them, but I, I know Sweetwater had them at one point. Um, they still have a page up with some of the information about it if you wanna just Google it and check it out. But this was something else that was interesting. So I was trying to find some more information on these whenever I bought it, and um, I found one other listing online for one, and it was on Chicago Music Exchange. <laughs> and funnily enough, it was this exact same guitar. The serial numbers matched. So this one that was on Chicago Music Exchange at one point ended up at Musician's Friend or Guitar Center somewhere, right? But on Musician's Friend, and here it is now. And here it will probably stay because this thing is amazing. Now, as you know, we're gonna talk about it. Um, realistically, I'll just say it's, if you know anything about Epiphone Les Paul Customs, it's pretty much just your standard Epiphone Les Paul Custom. This one obviously has some cosmetic differences, but, and I'll get into some of that in just a second, but I wanted to kind of explain a miracle, if you will, <laughs> of something that happened when I got this guitar because I just thought it was absolutely nuts. I think it's pretty universally understood as a guitar player when you get a guitar, some, especially something used and something that's maybe not from like Sweetwater or something. When you get them, they're not going to be in tune. They're not going to be set up. They're going to be absolute junkers to play until you get, you know, some good strings on it, set it up, clean it up, all that good stuff. So I think <laughs> that it's an extremely good sign of how this guitar is gonna be now and into the future, that I got it, I unboxed it, and you can ask my wife, she can attest to this. I unboxed it in my living room, I took it out, I got all my stuff together to clean it up, restring it, all that kind of good stuff. And just kind of as a joke, I always like to just say, hey, I'm gonna play a G chord, see how badly it's out of tune. I strum that G chord and it is perfectly, perfectly in tune. Not one note is out at all. That blew my mind. <laughs> I know that sounds so dumb, but it blew my mind that I got a used guitar from a guitar center shipped and it was in tune when I unboxed it. And another thing, it's set up damn near perfect. I mean, the pickup height is like bang on. The action is low and comfortable. The neck is perfectly set. I mean, it's just out of the box, literally. Realistically, even the strings aren't that bad. I think, yeah. They're Diodario, so, hey. <laughs> but anyway, that's just kind of a, a miracle on its own. It just goes to show that you can get a guitar shipped and ship it in tune. I know a lot of people detune them and everything, but this was shipped perfectly in tune, arrived perfectly in tune, perfectly set up. Again, I think that's a good sign for uh, how good the guitar this thing is. So aside from my little side stories, let's go ahead and talk specs, because I know that's what everybody's here for, not really. But I'll get into the specs of it, and then we'll get into some playing demos. As you know, I'll do one with a full mix, drums, bass, all that stuff, no singing, unfortunately. And then um, we'll go ahead and do some solo clips, clean and dirty through all of the pickup positions and all that good stuff. So. Let's go ahead and talk specs about it. So as always, I'll kind of be holding it up like this, you know, at various parts, and then I'll show some B-roll to get closer looks. But let's go ahead and start the headstock because that's where I'll always like to start. 
So you can see from looking at it straight away that this is an older model Epiphone. This is a 2005 and it's Korean made, which we'll get into more of those points later on because as some of my returning viewers might know, I have some opinions about Korean made models. But this is a Korean made, it's 2005. You can see the old Epiphone logo, the headstock shape, all that good stuff. Big old custom diamond inlay on the headstock, love that. Les Paul Custom on the truss rod cover and all that beautiful multi-layer binding around the headstock completely in line with what a custom should look like. Flipping over to the back there, you can see the gold Grover tuners hold tune very, very well. Working our way down to the nut, this nut looks like it could be a bone nut. Feels like a bone nut, doesn't feel like plastic. It actually feels like real bone too, so I don't know if it's like the new bone, graph tech, whatever. But with it being a 2005, it's very likely. I don't know, it looks like it may have been changed at one point, but bone nut, Good for tuning stability. Working our way down to the fretboard. It is a rosewood fretboard with the big, gorgeous block inlays. I love that. Got the binding down the side of the neck as uh, per usual. Standard scale length, 24 and three quarter inches. Uh, 22 medium jumbo frets. It's got the 60s slim taper neck profile and it's got a gloss neck on the back. You can see the back of it, it's all uh, red right there. And uh, scarf joint, which a lot of people um, I don't know if they really care if it's a scarf joint or not, but I've always heard that scarf joints are actually um, more stable. So, and that's what a lot of F ones are gonna have anyways, the scarf joints, so moving on. Oh, and the neck is also mahogany, as you would expect. Working our way down to this beautiful mahogany body. This guitar is not very heavy. Uh, I would say it's probably right in line with what a Les Paul should weigh. It's probably about eight to nine pounds. I don't know, I'd, I'd call it about eight and a half is, is pretty uh, accurate, I think. Got a black pit guard here, standard three-way switch, uh, bridge and tail piece, all that kind of cool stuff. I believe these are just some Alnico pickups. This is kind of where I get into the point of the Korean made stuff. I've had two other Korean made Epiphones in the past. I've, have, uh, I've had the Gold Top 56, which I liked it. The pickups were not good. The electronics were not very good. And then I have my Epiphone Explorer, which I made a video on that, where I actually upgraded it and everything. Um, the electronics on that were pretty, pretty junk as well. This one, however, the pickups are all right. They're not bad. They're pretty good. They're playable. They're actually audible. Um, they're pretty clear. So there's no immediate plans to change them right now. But uh, seeing as what it looks like aesthetically, I think you have an idea of what I may do to it. But anyway, so. Black pit guard, black pickup rings, gold hardware on there. So uh, gold little ring up here, gold pickup covers, gold bridge and tailpiece, all that kind of cool stuff. Now, one thing that uh, I noticed about it is these knobs, right? I don't think these are the original knobs, but whoever put these on made a great call because I think aesthetically they just look so nice. And one thing that I did not see on the original pictures on Musician's Friend, was this finish. So I think that's the one thing that stands apart from the Jerry Cantrell one, is that it's a plain top, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. This is a flame top, obviously, and that flame is beautiful, right? There's one oddity about it that I know that a lot of people don't necessarily like. I like it, it's this split right here. So you see like this side's more of like the plain and this side is more of the flame and it's you know two different kind of reds. I really like that. If you don't like it, hey, to each his own. I dig it. Then you got the multi-layer binding all around the body as well. And for laughs, here's the back of the guitar. Uh, it's got some scratches on it. Uh, it's got a little, got a little nick right there. But um, yeah, I mean, even the back looks kind of cool too. So there you go. So like I said, pretty standard through and through. Epiphone Les Paul Custom. So um, the wine red is really what makes this thing stand out. And um, it's just a joy to play. Like I said, it came set up, <laughs> came tuned. So. It's awesome. I really dig it. Um, I was looking for another Les Paul Custom and this is right up my alley. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into the mix and see what this thing sounds like and then uh, stick around after that for these solo clips of the pickups clean and dirty. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy the demo and I'll see you next time. 